weather system is moving through our area. Wait till you see Bob's first warning radar. Guns are making history in Annapolis tonight. The mayor's controversial police plan is made public, and reaction is swift and decisive. And Oriole Opening Day 2000 brings optimism, but does it bring a win? I'm Vic Carter, Eyewitness News Now, just seconds away. New batteries. Liquid wrench. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know, we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our... Are you following PHRM? Get your clients in the PHRM. Clinical testing through the roof. Discovery. We'll be announcing it soon. I hope this works. Me too. See the story behind the numbers. Go to cbs.marketwatch.com. Ford Focus is one of car and driver's ten best. Automobile of the year. North American Car of the Year. Ford Focus, starting at just over 13000 Only at your local Ford dealer. If you want that light beer taste, just add water. Amstel Light, the beer drinker's light beer. Live from WJZ 13, you've got Baltimore's favorite news team. Now, Eyewitness News. An eerie night from the WJZ Tower Cam as heavy rains move through Maryland. Hello, everyone. I'm Vic Carter. Denise has the night off. Here's what people are talking about tonight. Heavy rains are moving through our area right now. Bob is in the First Warning Weather Center with the latest. Bob. All right, take a look at these. Just in the last half hour, 40 minutes, we've had some moderate to heavy showers move through the region. Take a look at First Warning Radar. Right now, we've got some moderate to heavy rain activity just up to the north of our city, uh, across northeastern sections of Baltimore County, particularly over sections of Harford County, just northwest of Bel Air, some heavy rains. Also on the eastern shore, some heavy rains. Just south of the city, a little more activity, uh, just from the city on down toward the airport and Glen Burnie area. This is moving toward the city. So if you're out there in the next hour or so, you might be in for some heavy downpours, reduced visibilities when you're driving, so look out for that. If you're getting up in the morning, which I hope you do, cloudy, showery conditions, it'll be mild, 63 degrees. Come back with another look at the weather in just a few minutes. Vic. Okay, thank you, Bob. The other big story tonight, locks on guns will now be the law of the land in Maryland. The State House passes history-making legislation. A controversial law requiring locks on guns is approved tonight by the legislature. Eyewitness News was there for the historic vote. Kai Jackson has more from Annapolis. Vic, the governor calls it landmark legislation and hopes other states will follow Maryland's lead by passing similar gun safety laws. The debate was a formality. When the vote was taken, it was clear that the House would propel Senate Bill 211 into law. It passed by a vote of 83 to 57. Most importantly, this comprehensive bill will save lives. We have no doubt about that whatsoever. The law will require built-in safety locks on all new handguns sold in Maryland. If opponents couldn't stop it, they did their best to make passage slow and painful. The law will impact honest, law-abiding citizens only. This law isn't just about the Second Amendment. It's about common sense. We are raising the bar against gun violence. We will be the first state in the nation to require built-in gun locks on all new handguns. We will be the first state in the nation to require ballistic fingerprinting of those guns, and we are raising the standards for community safety and for responsible gun ownership. Governor Glenn Denning says it's sad, but he admits that lives will continue to be lost as a result of gun violence. But he hopes the hallmark of this law is that lives are saved. It's scheduled to take effect October 1st of this year. Vic, back to you.
Thank you, Kyle. And his news wants to remind you of some of the key points of this landmark gun bill. All handguns sold beginning January 1st, 2003 must have built-in locks. A convicted felon would get a minimum sentence of five years for illegal possession of a gun. Anyone convicted of a violent crime as a juvenile couldn't buy a handgun until the age of 30. Anyone buying a gun will have to take a two-hour gun safety training course. The city of Baltimore cannot wait for the new gun bill to take effect. It needs to find other ways to stop the escalating crime rate. As Eyewitness News has been telling you, the mayor and consultants from New York are working on a new police policy plan. And here it is. It is this 152-page report that's creating all the controversy. The plan outlines ways to stop the growing homicide rate in the city and calls for restructuring the department. It also is reportedly one of the reasons Commissioner Ron Daniel resigned last week. Any differences the commissioner and I had over this plan and, the, and its implementation were uh, operational differences, were professional differences, and were not ethical or, um, or, uh, or personal differences. Baltimore has the third highest homicide rate and is the second most violent city in America. There is an alarming disparity in who is getting killed. 273 African Americans were murdered last year compared to 26 whites. There has to be a big change, and there also has to be a big change in opening up the police department, making it a transparent agency so that the public will have confidence that we're doing just as good a job policing our police as we are, you know, solving crimes. So what's the plan? Create a department where officers are held accountable for fighting crime, where they have a reputation for fairness and excellence and have the confidence of the public. Closing open-air drug markets is key because it's believed the high murder rate is connected to drug activity. It also calls for the formation of a warrant task force to arrest some of the city's most dangerous criminals. Critics of the plan say the proposed zero-tolerance policy toward minor crimes might include racial profiling. It was that concern and the turmoil surrounding the departure of Commissioner Daniel that brought a couple hundred people to a community meeting tonight. Eyewitness News was there. Kathy Fowler is live with more on this emotionally charged forum. Kathy. Vic Mayor Martin O'Malley says his new police plan is the only way to reduce the escalating murder rate and make Baltimore a safer place to live. Many were concerned with O'Malley's plan before he was elected, but now after Police Commissioner Ron Daniel resigned, the plans come under heavy fire. Zero tolerance is not what we need in Baltimore City. Hundreds of the African-American community gathered tonight to send a strong message to Mayor Martin O'Malley. They don't want his new police plan, the one the mayor calls quality of life policing. We are ready to fight. Although most everyone here hasn't read the 152-page plan, they associate it with two words, zero tolerance and police brutality. sign says, biggest with badges. Okay, now this is what we're trying to make sure does not occur right here in this city. There were two other words that got everyone riled up. Ed Norris, he's the acting police commissioner, the man in charge after Colonel Ron Daniel resigned. He's also from New York and helped implement that city's zero tolerance plan. Nuclear, and I do mean nuclear, Ed Norris is not wanted here. He can pack his bag, get back on Amtrak. The mayor's press secretary, Tony White, tried to ease their fears. Every single community in this city, I'm going to bring Deputy Mayor uh, Ed Norris to you so you can ask him what you want. The fact is, phases of the new police plan have already been implemented. Here in the 1700 block of Pennsylvania Avenue, several phases of the zero tolerance form of policing were implemented a few months ago. And people in this West Baltimore community have nothing but good to say about the mayor's plan. You think it's worked? Yes, it's worked. So it works, you know, anything the law do works. Maury says he used to see drug dealers outside Murray's grocery store. Now he only sees shoppers shopping for legal buys. The mayor hopes that everyone will read the new police plan before they reject it. O'Malley plans to explain it and answer all questions on several radio stations starting tomorrow morning at 7.30. And Vic, he'll also hold a community meeting Wednesday night. Okay, thank you, Kathy, live from the Eyewitness Newsroom. Eyewitness News has new developments tonight in the controversial fight over a shipwrecked Cuban boy. The fate of Elian Gonzalez may be nearing a solution. As Elian played with a pet rabbit in the backyard of his great uncle's Miami home, the U.S. State Department decided to issue visas to Elian's father, stepmother, and four other Cubans. When Juan Miguel Gonzalez arrives in the U.S., he reportedly will take temporary custody of Elian. 
Meanwhile, the boys' Miami relatives continue their court battle to keep Elliot here. We continue to be first and foremost concerned about the mental, psychological well-being of this young six-year-old. And to that extent, uh, we have uh, spent a lot of time today talking about numerous issues, and we will be back tomorrow to continue our conversation. And in Havana, Fidel Castro staged a massive demonstration calling for Elian's return, including hundreds of singing children and flag-waving adults. We invite you to stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of this controversial child custody case. We will continue to update you until Elian's fate is decided finally. The Orioles' fate will not be decided until October, but today the O's began a new season with some familiar faces. And fans are hoping this year's version turns out a little better than last year. But today it was all about optimism. It's Orioles opening day, 2000. Unfortunately, the 2000 season began the way the 1999 season ended. John is live in the Sports Palace with the highlights. John. Well, Vic, the good news on this opening day was it didn't rain. However, that was also the bad news from the Orioles' perspective because the Indians got the best of them 4-1 to one was the final count. Downtown at Camden Yards, yeah, Cal Repkin into well. today just nine hits short of his 3,000th career hit. Came through bottom of the second inning, short fly ball going out into right center field. Ramirez comes sliding and can't make the catch. It was ruled a hit. Ripken into second with a double is now just eight hits shy of that 3,000 mark. Star of the game, though, turned out to be Cleveland's Kenny Lofton. Top of the sixth game was tied at one. Lofton looking at Mucina, takes a pitch away, goes with it, sends this one way back in the left field. Suroff going back, gives a look, gives it a jump, but he's nowhere near it. Home run, Kenny Lofton. Put those wacky wigwamers on top two to one. Lofton also with an RBI single, accounting for precisely half of the Indians' offense. Final comes four to one Cleveland. Bartolo Colon the win. Musina takes the loss. Same two go again on Wednesday downtown at Camden Yards in the first night game of this 2000 season. Back with some more highlights, post game comments, and get you up to date on, uh, in case you didn't see it, tonight's NCAA championship game. Sports back in about 17. Vic. Okay, thank you, John. The loss could not dampen fans' enthusiasm for opening day or the upcoming season. Denise has more from Oriole Park. You could call it the miracle at Oriole Park. We never had to use one of these today. All day long, the clouds rolled in, the clouds rolled out, but in the end, there was no rain, and the game played on through. Photographer Eric Heavy Scott and I went in search of opening day 2000. Opening day, opening day. Remember your program. The school closed today, huh? No, schools aren't closed, but playing hooky is cool yeah, if you've got a ticket yeah. and a mitt. Uh, for, well, I'm going to go out there and catch some balls. All right, good luck, Tyler. Okay. Hope you do it. Is this a good luck handshake? <laughs> <laughs> Even with the smell of barbecue, the sound of foaming beer, the orange and black everywhere. That and you do this because you're a really shy... Bashful. Bashful fellow, bashful. right. Uh -huh. yes. Even with wild really fans like Chuck. It doesn't feel like opening day. Maybe it was the gray skies over right field fly court. Oh. This is a souvenir or what? Yeah, I'll give it to my son. Aha! Uh -huh. Who hit? Uh, Will Clark. Finally, through the crowd, I saw a real sign this was opening day. 90-year-old Catherine Williams and her 93-year-old sister Lois. They're here every year, courtesy the O's, and they are ready for their guys. Who's your favorite? Brady. Brady. Uh, then Cal. Then Cal. Uh, I like them all, but I'm sort of like Palmero. Oh. I used to say Lois. So did yeah, I. I said, oh, but don't I'd say that I'd on say, TV. Yeah, he's, now, he's the one that I, he can put his shoes under my bed every day. <laughs> and I slapped her. I said, you don't say that on TV. <laughs> The good news is that Catherine and Lois both predict that the Orioles are going to have a great season. So don't let the opening day score discourage you. The season of 2000 has just begun. Vic. Okay, thank you, Denise. And in case you're wondering, today's game was, we are told, a sellout. Also ahead on WJZ's Eyewitness News, this woman accomplished something a half million others could not. Are you single? And what do you look like? And will you marry me? And <laughs> I'm married, but I can get rid of that. <laughs> what do you hear how she did on her tournament bracket? Jolton Joe Collectibles hit the auction. Think you can afford any? But first, Bill Gates loses big today. Take a guess how much. The answer when we come back.
You're watching Eyewitness News with Denise, Vic, Bob Winter, and John Sports. People who help make Eyewitness News Baltimore's favorite news team. They got a horse race now. It is charismatic, the leader on the outside. Menifee, charismatic, has done it. The crown awaits charismatic. Lucky termites. They think they're getting a free lunch. We'd like to think of it as their just desserts. Call 1-800-TERMINEX for our advanced termite baiting program with Centricon, the best way to help control or eliminate termites. And it's backed by the best guarantee in the business, termites. That free lunch is more like your last meal. 1-800-TERMINEX. No bugs, no hassles. New batteries. Free installation. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Next time, call an expert. Call Rotor Rooter. America's neighborhood plumber. Out of the turn, into the stretch, with Nashua trying to pass him. Dueling down the stretch, Saratoga gives ground grudgingly, but Nashua gains inch by inch and hits the wire winner by a length. See your authorized BMW Center for lease and finance options. A staggering blow today for Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates and his giant computer empire. A federal judge ruled that Microsoft is in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act by seeking a virtual monopoly and unfairly linking its operating system and web browser. The decision makes Microsoft vulnerable to lawsuits and possibly even a breakup of the company. In tonight's Eyewitness News Consumer Watch, the Microsoft decision rocked Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrials Average shot up more than closed at 11,221.93, but the NASDAQ recorded its worst drop ever in a single day. Those stocks plunged almost 350 points to close at 4,224.20. Microsoft stock dropped 14%, meaning Bill Gates lost a cool $11 billion. A group of people who wants the South, uh, to, wants South Carolina to lose the Confederate flag flying over its capital were on the march. This is day two of a five-day, 120-mile protest march calling for the flag to be removed from the Statehouse Dome. Marchers say the flag is a racist emblem Flag defenders say it is a symbol of Southern heritage and that it honors the ancestors who fought for the Confederate cause. Finally tonight, if you're feeling a little ancient uh, from losing an hour of sleep this weekend, of course this isn't our last story, the authors of two books on napping say they know what you need, 40 winks at work to get you through the day. Ron Matt says more on how sleeping on the job may just improve your performance. Okay, so you lost one hour of sleep over the weekend. Guess what? It's National Workplace Napping Day. It's big news on the Associated Press. A snooze at work may be just what you need. Are you going to get a nap at work? That's yeah. my middle name. What's that? That's my middle name, John Knapp. <laughs> Tired from doing nothing. Well, you know, you lost an hour of sleep over the weekend. I know. Yeah. That's what's the matter, I guess. I see. Okay, kid, I have a feeling you're not getting a lot of sleep. You could take your cue from Angie, who was heading for her siesta at work this morning. Well, you know, you can take a nap today at work. It's National Nap at Work Day. Is it? Yeah. Well, I'll do it now. I'll see you guys later. All right. Your first impression was that you were the man in charge here. And I, I am I in charge. <laughs> I'm in charge of Channel 13. Do you think they'll call again? Actually, the folks really in charge couldn't nap today. It was opening day. Too many deadlines, too much work to do, not enough sleep. I need it. 
You have to get it for me. Hey, remember the sleepwalkers? Losing too much sleep can cause some major changes. So don't lose. Enjoy that snooze. Ron Max, WJZ, Eyewitness News. To read the sign next to him said, Genius at work. <laughs> He is a genius. In, in, in his own way, Ryan Maps is a genius. Hey, nap would be good right about now. Yeah, I love naps. Naps yeah. are great. Yeah. Now, fortunately, my naps always want to come at like 5 30, 6 o'clock when I'm on the air. Yeah, <laughs> always. Yeah. All right, we've got some weather around the region. We always have weather energy, but tonight we have some rain to show you. We'll come back with that in just a second. Take a look at the current conditions 64, dew point 63, humidity almost socked in, 97%. Wind south at 8 around the 2969 and it's falling air quality in the moderate range at 57 your tides for tomorrow sunrise at 646 sets at 734 that's nice come back and take a look at the full forecast and first warning radar when we come back Call now and order Comcast Digital Cable with HBO and get free installation plus four free tickets to the Orioles. That's right, four free tickets. Plus, call now and get connected by tomorrow. Call 410-427-5050. 410-427-5050. Now there's a Chevy Venture with flip and fold seats and a built-in entertainment system. I knew I should have taken a lift turn at Albuquerque. Introducing the Warner Brothers edition from Chevy Venture, the most versatile minivan ever. Give us a call. Chevy Venture will be there. Get 1500 cash back on any Chevy Venture model, including the popular Venture LS. See your Chevy dealer today. Call now and order Comcast Digital Cable with HBO and get free installation plus four free tickets to the Orioles. That's right, four free tickets. Plus, call now and get connected by tomorrow. Call 410-427-5050. 410-427-5050. At LASIK Plus Vision Centers, we believe top quality laser vision correction should be affordable and accessible for everyone. That's why LASIK Plus brings you freedom from contacts for just $2,995 for both eyes. That's $29.95 for advanced laser technology and the expertise of our highly skilled, experienced ophthalmologists. And here's another big plus. For a limited time only, LASIK Plus Vision Centers are offering a complete eye exam with dilation at no charge to see if you are a candidate for advanced laser vision correction. Others charge up to $100 for this type of exam. So call 1-888-529-2020 now to schedule your free eye exam. Our doctors will then be able to tell you whether you qualify for laser vision correction at LASIK Plus that could provide you with 20-20 vision and freedom from contacts, all for just $2,995. Call now to schedule your free complete eye exam at 1-888-529-2020. That's 1-888-529-2020. LASIK Plus Vision Centers. You deserve a lifetime of better sight. In tonight's Eyewitness News Health Watch report, a uh, warning to parents about putting too much faith in swimming lessons. A medical organization says young children don't have the motor skills to learn to swim until they're four years old. Younger children may learn to doggy paddle and float, but they may not be able to stay afloat consistently. So parents should always be right beside infants and toddlers anywhere near the water. In other Health Watch news, the place to be today was anywhere near Cadman Yards. Health Watch reporter Kelly Lynn was there and found some healthy food choices while browsing the concession stand fair. There are lots of ways to satisfy your appetite here at the ballpark, and believe it or not, many of the options like this vegetable wrap are healthy ones. How's that look? Uh, let's see, we got cheeseburger, a little pit turkey, some fries, and a microbrew. Oh man, this barbecue is excellent. Nachos, peanuts, I was gonna say nachos. hot dogs. Hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, nachos, just live it up, you know, have a good time. If your idea of a good time at the ballpark is filling up on food, Camden Yards is a place to be. Seemingly endless choices, many of which are healthy. Veggie wraps, grilled chicken sandwiches, frozen yogurt and smoothies, even low-fat hot dogs. The lower-fat 
hot dogs, depending on whether they have a soy base to them or whether they're made from a turkey product, could be as low as maybe 10, 20 percent of the calories from fat. And a regular hot dog could be as high as 50, 60 percent of the calories from fat. Registered dietitian Ellen Carlin warns health-conscious baseball fans to be aware that condiments can be loaded with fat. Her advice, choose mustard over mayonnaise and you'll get zero fat. As for the ideal ballpark meal, I would choose one of the lower fat veggie sandwiches, maybe with a soft pretzel, and I understand they're going to have frozen yogurt. That would make a great dessert. Ellen says you can easily consume three days' worth of fat during one visit to the ballpark, so make sure you stick with healthy fare and keep those portions within reason. Vic? Thanks, Kelly. The Orioles decided to thank everyone with the help of one lucky little boy. The O's chose a young fan today to become the 10th man. And as Stan Saunders shows us, the fun started from the minute he and his family walked into the ballpark. The hunt was on for the prospective 10th man or woman that came in all shapes, sizes, and colors, whether it was on the face or in the hair. 10th man is a fan that we're going to select today coming into the gates for opening day to represent all of our fans. Chris Palmasano Urion of the O's Public Relations Department had to be very particular in her choice. It'll be a surprise. Only you and I will know who it is. Only you and I, Chris? Yes. You promise yes. not to tell? We won't tell anyone. Oh, okay. Hi, how are you guys today? Uh, good. Good. Okay. Guess not. You're just looking for something that catches your eye, right? Yes. Okay. And the ages have to be? Between about 8 and 10. He looks a little shy. You can usually tell when they First start of all, running. I think maybe we ought to get like this. Start looking for people. Before long, Chris made the catch of the day in snagging 11-year-old Danny Carroll of Silver Spring. And we were thinking you might be a great 10th man for us. Oh, yeah, he loves it. He's here because he's doing so well in school. And after a little paperwork, showtime wasn't too far away. There we go. Okay. I'm nervous. Today, what did it sound like? I was so nervous. And it was like, I was just so nervous. Is this something you'll always remember? Yeah. For how long, Chris? For how long? I my whole life. Well, I, th I guess I would remember that too. Kidding? Got to keep the hat. <laughs> that's, great. that's great for him. That's great. Yes. You Did you have never, fun down the ballpark? No, never, I was never the tenth man. Yeah, sorry about I that. I've been the first man. Did you have fun though down there today? <laughs> I was down. We had a good time. A lot of folks said hi, and we mm -hmm. want to say hi to you all. Thanks for watching it. Had a really good time down there. The weather was incredible. Did you eat healthy though? Did you eat healthy? I ate some peanuts, small bag of peanuts, <laughs> and I had a diet soda. That's it. That's okay. all I ate. That's all I got to it. Right. At, at around 8th inning, they stopped serving food out there, Vic. They stopped serving food. Really? They were cleaning up. People were walking out. You couldn't get anything. Too anyway. bad. We've mm. got some weather to talk about. We've got radar to show you. We've got th showers and thunder showers popping up all over the place. These are all the rain showers that we missed today. Now they're moving through the region and some areas, some pretty heavy stuff. Let's, let's do some zooms for you. Let's first move into the Baltimore area. Right around the city, not a lot of activity right now. It's just rather light. Heavy stuff up by Bel Air, for sure. Some very modest to heavy rain just east of Bel Air, just northwest of 95. There at Boyd Corner, Calvary. Man, it's really coming down over there. In fact, let's zoom into this little neighborhood right over here and see what kind of rain we're getting near Calvary. Let's find some streets up this way, okay? We can, we can do this for you, I'm telling you. All right, right here, right here, we've got... Let's see what street we have here. All right. James Run Road. It's raining on the cats and dogs up there. This one we've got. Let's see. This is the heaviest rain in the area. James Run Road again. The heck of that. But that ain't right. <laughs> All right. We'll go back to Calvary. Anyway, as you can see, it's a pretty good rain around the area. And more stuff out to our west as well. Some moderate to heavy activity located out in portions of Carroll County and Northwestern Baltimore County, all this stuff heading up toward York, so that won't affect the Baltimore area. Another batch of moderate rain southwest of the city. This looks like it's going to head toward Baltimore and the western suburbs during the next hour. It's moving rather quickly. In fact, the latest uh, trajectory on these showers moving north and northeast at around 40 miles an hour. So it doesn't look like it's going to rain at your house for a long, long period, but the kids see some brief, heavy downpours 
during the next few hours. Now, overnight, there's more activity out to our west and southwest. So we're going to continue to see the rain moving toward the Baltimore area. It was warm today, and this, some of this warm weather is helping to create the showers around the region. You can see heavy stuff now just west of Philadelphia, northeastern Maryland, moving off to the northeast. Uh, further west, they do have a flash flood watch in effect for Garrett County. One to two inches of rain out there could cause some flooding in small streams tonight and during the morning tomorrow. So in Baltimore right now, some light rain, heavier stuff to the west. This is all moving to the east, northeast. So we'll see some more rain overnight and during the day tomorrow, more rain as well. How warm did it get today? Awfully warm. Take a look at these temperatures. 75 degrees it got to today. Not quite the record, mm, far away from that. 88, the record high back in 1963. 59, the low so far, very warm, very warm night. 27, the record low back in 1985. Normal is now 60 and 39, as you can see, that normal high was last night's low. Precip to date, counting some rain this evening at the airport. 10.17 inches and going up. That's good. We gotta get this nice, good spring rain in to fill the reservoirs and fill the groundwater reserves in case we do get into a dry spell this summer, which it seems as though most long-range predictions uh, think we're going to repeat what we had last summer, at least a month or two where we have some very dry conditions across the region. All right, on the bay tomorrow, with the frontal system to our west approaching us, the winds will pick up out of the southwest, bringing all this moisture in. Uh, southwest, but by tomorrow evening, they shift around to the northwest. Cooler, drier air moves in, which will tend to get the rain out of here by tomorrow evening. 15 to 30 with some higher gusts than any thunder showers. Two to three foot chop in the bay. Water temperature coming around 51 degrees. Right now around the region, temperatures mild. 61 in Cumberland, 69 in Richmond, 64 in Salisbury. Ocean City with the winds out of the southeast off the ocean, only 56 degrees. Dover at 62 and around the metro, mid to upper 60s before the rain hits. Some of these temperatures have lowered during the last hour, but we don't have those reports for you this very second. But trust me, they're in the lows to mid 60s. I mean, a huge slug of moisture from northern New York State, just around the Canadian border, St. Lawrence River, this is the St. Lawrence Seaway that goes through through there. All this rain heading southward toward New Orleans, and it's just crossing through Louisiana area right now. Heavy storms and thunderstorms over portions of Alabama, one to three inches of rain down there. Rain heavy right now in Atlanta, this, all this rain moving out to the east and all the individual cells moving to the northeast. So we've got a pretty good slug of rain moving through the Maryland area tonight and during the day tomorrow, maybe an inch to two inches of rain before it cuts off tomorrow evening as this front clears our region and drier, cooler temperatures, windy conditions in for tomorrow night and on Wednesday. Out west, a beautiful ridge of high pressure, 90 degrees tomorrow in Phoenix, Denver had 38 today, 72 tomorrow. Big change up, warmer air moving in the Midwest, excuse me, the Rockies and the, and the Southwest. In the Midwest, chilly air coming from Canada, which will moderate rather quickly. So even though it's going to get chilly tomorrow night and Wednesday, it's going to warm up again by the end of the week. You can see all this rain in the eastern section of the United States, right through Maryland now, some pretty moderate rain activity, and a lot more to our south, and this all has to move through our region during the overnight tonight. So when you wake up, it will be quite wet. Low pressure over portions of West Virginia, very close to our region. That's why we're in the warm air. Behind this, a little cooler air moving in after the system moves through. And that'll take place by tomorrow night. And then a nice warm up for Thursday and Friday. So forecast for overnight, cloudy showers, some thunder showers in some locations. 56 for the overnight low in the next five days. Showers, some thunder showers, perhaps some moderate to heavy rains tomorrow. 70 down to 48. Partly sunny, breezy, chilly on Wednesday, high of only 56. Frost likely in some suburbs on Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Sunshine back up to 60 or better on Thursday. Sunshine, a few clouds Friday, close to 70. A uh, chance of some more showers late Saturday, high of 62. Vic? Okay, thank you, Bob, for that extended weather report. As we told you earlier, big developments tonight in the Elian Gonzalez case. Jennifer Jones has more from Miami. As thousands of people rallied in Havana, Cuba for the return of little Elian Gonzalez, a new development hundreds of miles away may speed up the process. The State Department says it has approved six visas. That means Elian's father and other family members, his kindergarten teacher and physician, could be coming to the United States within hours. 
Meanwhile, protesters in Miami's Cuban community are standing firm on their position that Elian has no place in Cuba. The controversy has kept South Florida on edge. Police are keeping a close eye on any demonstrations as negotiations go on surrounding the boy who was rescued off the Florida coast some four months ago. We are prepared to send a strong message uh, to the government, but uh, within a non-violent approach. Immigration officials are still hoping for a negotiated settlement that would reunite Elian with his father. They've been meeting with the boy's Miami relatives for a third day, looking for a settlement in the stalemate. Without an agreement, INS officials have threatened to revoke the six-year-old boy's status and send him home. We have faith in the law and in the government, and we hope that we can resolve this. More talks are set between INS officials and Ilion's relatives here in Miami. Negotiations set to continue 10 o'clock Tuesday morning. But with visas already granted, Ilion's father and several others by then may be in the States. Jennifer Joe, CBS News, Miami. We invite you to stay with Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of this controversial child custody case. We will continue to update you until Elian's fate is finally decided. Close to home, half the fun of opening day is looking around to see all the celebrities in the stands and up in the owner's box. Richard Scherer shows us some of the sights and sounds and faces of today's opening game. I think that uh, obviously you wish every day could be opening day. It's like a, a rebirth and a revitalization. It just makes you feel good to be able to uh, be back around the game again, um, no matter what the prospects may be for your ball club during the season. You know, we have about 350 media here when you know, normally we have maybe 50 to 75, and it's just making sure that everybody is accommodated and taken care of. And now, Marty Bass, finish this sentence. To me, baseball is spring. But what could be better than uh, calling nine innings and hopefully say the Orioles win? I hope you can do that today. Thank you, Richard. I just know I'm a lot better broadcaster when the Orioles win. And this is my 21st, so I've been very lucky. 21st year? 21st year. You only look like you're 25. Oh, uh, you should see me in the morning. Uh, so like an inauguration or something. It it's really a, is, though. Yeah, it's, it's a real special day. I must ask you, how does the Cardinal feel about the Orioles this year? This Cardinal is always happy to root for Orioles. Oh, I actually, I like playing it more than watching it. You're a jock, then. I'm a jock, that's really? right. I like to be on the field, getting involved, doing stuff. Actually, I, for the first time this year, first time ever, saw a spring training game. In Florida. In Florida. You forced yourself to go to Florida, did you? In Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. yeah, I saw, and they won the game, so I take great comfort from that. How do you think the Orioles are going to do this season? I, I don't know. I, you know, it's a hard one to guess because, um, you know, it depends on, this, on the pitching for one, and uh, a couple players have to have career years, I think. This is still fun. When it no longer is fun, then it's time to ride off into the sunset. I get to throw out the opening pitch. High pressure. But I think the Orioles are going to do great. It's going to be a good season, and um, it's a great day. How do you think the Orioles are going to do? Good. I think it's going to be a great day, and I'm sure we're going to win. Before you went into movies, didn't you really want to be a professional baseball player? <laughs> Not a chance. I'd always like to be one, but never be good enough. Would it be inappropriate for me to ask you to say a little special blessing for the Orioles when you get to your seat, all right? Well, I don't know if they need a blessing. We're delighted to have you here. Thank you. Richard needs a blessing. Well, Joe DiMaggio was a celebrity and big league ball player, and you'll need a large money clip if you want to own a piece of the Yankee Clippers memorabilia. The Joe DiMaggio collection is going up for bid later this week in New York. Among the items you could own, his blue golf cart and a Florida DiMaggio 5 license plate, but the centerpiece is this jersey from the last game of the 1951 World Series, expected to go for as much as $150,000. Well, that's Incredible. swell. <laughs> well, what and do you I do with it? Of course, they think it's okay. Yeah, it's okay with us. I mean, what do you do with it? I've never got... Hang it on the wall. I guess. I mean, I, I, I have had opportunities to get collectibles, and I've never been a collector. I just don't understand that. But you, in your own right, are a collectible. Oh, junk. No, you're a collectible. Oh, I am a collectible, yeah. <laughs> Would you like to take me home? Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, we might be going back to Indianapolis for some bonus coverage of tonight's Final Four. We'll check in with the post-game news conferences and uh, have some stuff from opening day. Stay with us. We're coming right back. For a young team that I'm sure is somewhat shocked. We set out to build a new full-size truck unlike anything else on the road today. Its 32-valve I-Force V8 engine will redefine performance. And its one-piece frame rail chassis will give new meaning to strength. 
And yet there is one crucial area where we fall short of most other competitors in our class. And that's price. Introducing the new full-size Toyota Tundra. Have we gone too far? Or have others not gone far enough? Look at that. Staples has overnight delivery. Oh, let me see. Wow, you're right. Hey, look. They're at cheap low prices. <laughs> Slow down. Staples delivers. And you can order online. This traffic's terrible. Yep. Like this every single day. That's really weird. Need office products delivered overnight? Yeah, you get that. Call 1-800-STAPLES. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But on May 7th, Southwest Airlines will take off and fly to an exciting new destination, Albany, New York. So get ready for May 7th when we finally... You are now free to move about the country. Turtle Wax. Grizzly Grill Guards. Rancho Shocks. Gas Cans. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. When news breaks, count on WJZ Eyewitness News. Immediate response, live reports, latest updates. Immediate news coverage helps make WJZ Eyewitness News Baltimore's favorite news team. You're watching Eyewitness News, Baltimore's favorite news team. No, you don't? Man. No, no, you don't, man. No, 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 you don't no. man. Hey, <laughs> Eyewitness Sports has a gas update. <laughs> Gasoline? Yep. <laughs> Traveling into Central Virginia this weekend past. Okay. Buck 35 in Warrington. Oh, really? Dollar 35. You got to get the south side of Warrington. There are like three places. It's a dollar 35. By the time you get there and fill up and make it back, you're going right. to yeah, yeah, yeah. get <laughs> anyway, But uh, Yeah, the guy told me, I was talking to the guy who ran one of these gas stations. He said he expects the price of gas to go down for the next month or so, mm -hmm. and then right at the end of May. Oh, right yeah. By, right by the time kids get out of school. Time <laughs> to hit the roads, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we got some more opening day stuff for you. Not a real good exhibition of clutch hitting this afternoon. O's leave nine men on base on their way to a 4-1 to loss to those Clevelanders. On opening day, Musina with his sixth opening day start. Had the game even at 1-1, top of the sixth, looking at Kenny Loft and nobody on. Left field and later. Surhoff can't get near it. That's solo bingo to give the Clevelanders a 2-1 advantage. Need they would not surrender. Play of the game. Home half of the seventh inning. O's with a tying run at second to Shields. Pops one into short left field. Omar Vizquel on the dead run, going away, lays out. Oh, my! That's about as good as it gets right there, pal. Rob to Shields, kills the Oriole rally, ends the inning. Go top of the eighth inning, Lofton up there again with two men on, two men out. Slap shot, right side, pass Clark, Travis Fryman trots in from third to make it a three to one game. The final goes four to one. Clevelanders, Lofton driving in two of those runs. Felt pretty good about coming away with a win against Musina. Yeah, anything's good when you face a Messina and we end up, you know, you know sneaking out a win. That's that's kind of awesome for us because he's one of the toughest pitchers in the league, and we end up you know, taking advantage of a couple, you know, misfortunes, you know, here and there. It wasn't a situation where uh, I felt like I was running out of gas. I mean, I don't, you know, after after those guys have seen me, you know, three and four at bats, uh, it's tougher. But uh, I thought I was still still throwing the ball well, and uh, they just put the bat on the ball and, and uh, put it in some spots where uh, where we weren't standing. You see the loss, Cologne the win, 4-1 to one, Clevelanders. That's the final count on opening day. Same two going back at it. Wednesday night, that's going to be Ponson and Finley, the scheduled starters there. National League on this opening day, terrific story out of Atlanta. Andres Galarraga back after missing all of last season, recovering from cancer surgery and treatment. Home half of the seven, Galarraga comes up with nobody on, storybook stuff. There's a drive. Did he get enough of it? Deep left center. Good one on the run at the wall. It's gone. The big cat Jackson, 400 feet for his first home run since coming back from cancer. He gave the Braves a one to nothing lead. Final comes two to nothing Braves over those Colorado Rockies. Main event tonight, of course, the NCAA championship game in Indianapolis has seen 
right here on this television station. Michigan State, winner by 13 points over Florida, picking up the Spartans in the white uniform, stripped the ball away in the lane, quickly out on the run. They got a two-on-two. Two. Charlie Bell feeds Jason Richardson. He lays it up and in. Spartans on top by 11 at the half. Gators never got closer than six from there on in. Spartans break the Florida press. Cleaves knifing between defenders to the hole. 18 points, four assists for Cleve, despite playing the final 10 minutes on a sprained ankle. Spartans win it. 89-76. Cleves the game MVP. Spartans shooting 57% and laying claim to their first national championship since 1979. Live bonus coverage of the post-game news conference coming your way right now from Indianapolis. Like us, you know, he's ready to get down and dirty, and he's down hollering, and he's doing his defensive shuffles, you know. So if anything I ever learned from Coach is always stay humble, you know, and stay positive no matter what the situation is, and hard work does pay off. In the back. Uh, Mateen and uh, Charlie, you guys must have known going in you were going to make some hay with their press, and, and you really just killed them in transition. Can you talk about what you wanted to do and how you did it? Well, uh, one thing, you know, we did is, uh, Coach, you know, put together a great game plan. You know, we knew we, uh, we were going to get pressed, and, um, you know, uh, we, we kind of went a one-four set, and we wanted to make one pass, then let me cut through the middle, and let me get the second pass, and we just wanted to push it. And when we got numbers, he just told us to attack it, you know, but... You know, we, we did a, a good job of breaking their presence. We do got to give a lot of credit to the coaches because they set up the formation we set up. In, in That's Mateen Cleves, named tonight as the most valuable player for this year's Final Four. He had 18 points and four rebounds this evening, and the Spartans 89-76 to victory over the Florida Gators in the NCAA championship game. This has been live bonus coverage from Indianapolis of tonight's NCAA title contest. And finally tonight, for those of you who enjoyed the NBA fight yesterday, let it be recorded that the league office was not the least amused. Chris Childs of the Knicks, who threw the first punch, suspended for two games without pay and fined 15 grand. His opponent, Kobe Bryant, gets a one-game suspension, also without pay, and a fine of $5,000. Neither player was hurt. The Lakers won the basketball game 106 to 82. And a good time was had by all. <laughs> it looks like it. We'll be right back. O'Connor, Piper, and Flynn ERA proudly provides real-time closed captioning of Eyewitness News because every home deserves equal access to news and information. O'Connor, Piper, and Flynn ERA, the home team. In Baltimore, companies are growing and people are on the move. To help get your career on track, WJZ and Infinity Radio present the Better Job Network. It's free, and hundreds of companies are using it to promote job openings to qualified applicants. Log on to WJZ.com and click on the Better Job Network, or pick up a free Better Job Network paper at your local grocery store, video store, or street box. Get a better job with the Better Job Network from Infinity Radio and WJZ. CBR. Red Hot, three performances only, April 12th, 14th and 15th at Lyric Opera House. Broadway. Noise. Opening night, best seats, $29. Wow. Savion's Footnotes. Catch it now. Part of the proceeds from the Friday Night Show benefit the Al Sanders Foundation for Musical Studies, sponsored by WJZ. Get tickets now. I was just expecting to pay off some credit card bills. All of a sudden, I'm being asked what my goals and dreams are. If you're a homeowner and you call 1-800-CHAMPION for a pay down your debt program, we're going to show you some possibilities. I was given this plan that shows me which bill to pay off for the most savings, how I can use the extra savings to buy a new car, renovate my kitchen, pay off my home sooner. We call it our possibilities profile. It's impressive. Shouldn't you know all your possibilities? When your bank says no, champion says yes. You know, this is a beautiful lawn. Don't believe me? Here, I'll show you. Looks easy, right? And it can be. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call the professionals at True Green Chem Lawn. We'll conduct a 14-point analysis of your lawn absolutely free. Call us today so we can help you uncover your lawn's hidden beauty. Get an early start on a beautiful lawn with a free lawn analysis. Call 1-800-TRUE-GREEN today. Operators are standing by. Call now. Got milk? Farmers in the Netherlands do, but the way they're getting their milk is very 21st century. Here's the method that's catching on. Milk Robox. 
The cows walk up to the milking robot. The robot clamps its suction cups onto the cow's udders, and <laughs> voila, you've got milk. Farmers don't even have to leave the house. They read the results from their home computers. Wow. Finally tonight, don't watch this story if you just lost a bundle in a basketball pool. 29-year-old Kristen Hegelson won the, was the only person out of about 600,000 to guess the final four in a contest on the ESPN website. She simply picked the teams she liked. Her picks have gotten her quite a response. Her email has ranged from the bitter sports losers who uh, accuse her of cheating to the sweet several marriage proposals. That's it for tonight, everyone. For Denise, Bob, and John, I'm Vic. Thanks for making Iowa News Baltimore's favorite news team. See you later. When you see news happen, call the Eyewitness News Hotline. And Baltimore's favorite news team is on the Internet. Log on to WJZ.com. If buying a new home were as simple as finding one you like, It'd be easy, but it's not. Buying a new home means finding one you can afford in a place that you like, in a style that you like, and one that your family is comfortable in. That's why you should join me, Mike Rowe, every Sunday morning right here on WJZ at 1030 for a program called Your New Home. I'll do the legwork, I'll drive around, I'll talk to the builders, and we'll show you the model homes and the communities. You decide which one you like. Sunday, right here on WJZ at 1030. CBR. Red Hot, three performances only, April 12th, 14th, and 15th at Lyric Opera House, Broadway. Noise, opening night, best seats, $29. Wow. Savion's Footnotes, catch it now. Part of the proceeds from the Friday Night Show benefit the Al Sanders Foundation for Musical Studies, sponsored by WJZ. Get tickets now.